Hey Sooners, it's uh, Captain Swanson here, or David, as I would wish for you to call me into the future. Uh, it's probably not a mystery to most of you. I know that news travels at the speed of speed of Instagram or the speed of Snapchat these days, but I just wanted to say and uh, be, be share with you uh, directly um, a Swanson family update. And, uh, and that is that uh, we are gonna be leaving Oklahoma this summer. Uh, we're going to go to Georgia, my wife's hometown, and we are very excited for the adventures ahead of us. Uh, and of course, that means that uh, I'll be leaving the program and uh, quite frankly and unfortunately, uh, seeing each other at our last lab before spring break is the last time I will see most of you. Uh, I kind of feel like the character in a sitcom maybe got written off after the uh, previous season's finale and uh, kind of has to check out of the series on a, on a, on a snap or on a FaceTime or on Skype or something like that. It's like, uh, oh, where's, uh, where, where's Nard Dog? Oh yeah, he's, uh, oh, we just got a FaceTime from him. He's in the middle of the ocean and he's, uh, uh, he's not coming back. Um, but I guess that's better than, uh, uh, where's Alex Karev? Oh, he's with Izzy and uh, you'll just never see him again. No, um, not a proper goodbye, I think is what I'm saying, but um, it's, uh, it's what we have to, to work with in 2020 amidst COVID-19 and the circumstances we've given. So, you know, a lot less flair and way less goofy. I just wanna speak to you from my heart uh, for a second here and um, bid you see you later because we don't really do goodbye in the army or in life, but we can, uh, we can do see you later for sure. You know, we brought you a lot of lessons uh, across your MS3 year and maybe for some of you who are watching this across many years of interacting uh, with Sergeant Rubel and myself in the ROTC classroom. And as important as LDR SHIP is, absolutely the Army values, um, core competencies and of extreme importance to our profession. I hope that also what I've brought you is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I hope these fruits of the Spirit of God have been evident uh, in me uh, and you know, even thinly veiled at times, and perhaps I, uh, uh, should I ever have spoken out of turn in uniform uh, on a religious posture, I actually don't apologize. Uh, believing in Jesus Christ motivates my every being, every move in daily life, and I hope that that has been evident uh, in what uh, I have taught you. But enough on that uh, for, for a second. Oh, let me offer you one more secular reading. Uh, something I've been reading recently, Fortitude by Dan Crenshaw. And uh, how fitting is it that my last reading recommendation from you is, um, is by a Navy SEAL. You know, um, King beat Navy. And uh, we've had plenty of conversations about um, good and bad machismo that uh, may come from the SEAL community. But this one, this one's worth your $20. And four, six, or eight hours, however long it's going to take you to read it. So Fortitude by Dan Crenshaw, really relevant message, something uh, worthwhile for you to read this summer or uh, just in future leisure reading, reading of choice. And then, uh, like I said, can I share with you something that has just really helped me out, something that has totally changed my life? And uh, kind of like I said, uh, you know, I, I know I've shared the ancient wisdom from the Bible or one of my favorite leaders said this and uh, shared something from the words and teachings of Jesus. I know it's not a mystery to you uh, what I believe in and what shapes my worldview, but from the podium in our OTC classroom, in uniform, with U.S. Army and my name and a rank, I always uh, hope I did and I always tried to be appropriate with um, not overtly proselytizing. But in these last few minutes that we have in a farewell, maybe you'll just let me share with you very uh, heartfelt what truly has changed my life. Uh, and that is, in the beginning, some popular famous words uh, from the Bible, Genesis 1-1, in fact, in the beginning was God's original design. Uh, in the beginning, God had, had an original design, and it's all around us. Uh, we can see it in nature. Think about sunrises and uh, an ocean breeze, the mountains, even the miracle of birth. That's um, the beauty of God's original design. God had a, has a design for every area of our lives, our family life, our marriages, our money, sex life, work life, just plain life. God had an original design that was perfect, but 
but we have all rebelled against that original design. We have all departed from God's original design and gone our own way. And this, of course, is called sin. Sin is a departure from God's original design. Sin is anything we think, say, do, or don't do that separates us from God's original design. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's found in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Here's the thing about sin. Sin doesn't just make us bad. Sin doesn't deserve consequences or punishment. Sin makes us dead. Sin doesn't make us bad. Sin makes us dead. Sin leads to a departure from God's original design and a dive into brokenness. Brokenness. You, know, you may think about it as any problem, issue, or concern uh, in your life. Think about discouragement, depression, addiction, isolation, guilt, shame. These are all forms of brokenness that are brought on by sin. If God's original design was for perfect nature, then pollution is, is a type of brokenness. We've all experienced brokenness in relationships, in sex. You may think of brokenness of war, jail, incarceration, money, illnesses, death itself. The thing is, we all want out of brokenness, so we try to fix it. But when we try to fix it by ourselves, our brokenness only results in more brokenness. These are all the results of sin. It's really important, guys. I think everybody would probably agree that no one in the world is untouched by brokenness. The good news is that God sent his son, Jesus, to live a perfect life on earth, die the death that I deserve, that you deserve, to die the death that we all deserve because of our sins on the cross and to be raised again from the dead. This is called the gospel. When Jesus died on the cross, God did a miracle. He took all of my sin and put it on Jesus and he took all of Jesus's righteousness and put it on anyone who believes in Jesus. This means that we are no longer broken in God's eyes. We are made right with him again. The gospel doesn't just make us better. The gospel makes us alive. Remember, sin doesn't make us bad. Sin makes us dead. Let me say it again. The gospel doesn't make us better. The gospel makes us alive. All that anyone has to do to receive the gospel is to repent and believe. This is how you are saved. This is the moment of salvation. Jesus' own words in Mark chapter 1, verse 15 are, Repent and believe the good news. The good news is the gospel. You may hear uh, church words like, Accept Jesus into my life or invite Jesus into my heart. The Bible actually never talks about accepting or inviting or into my heart. The Bible says, repent and believe. Again, Jesus' own words, Mark 1, 15, repent and believe the good news. Now, just as I've taught you so many things in the classroom, let me teach one more time, if I may, define a couple of these words here. Repent. What is repent? Repent is a change of mind followed by a change in direction. A change of mind followed by a change in direction. We were headed one way. And we are trying to fix it on our own, but now we have turned from that and turned to Jesus. Repent, a change of mind followed by a change in direction. Belief. What is belief? Well, that might seem like a really simple word. I believe in a lot of things. Uh, believe. Believe is to say that we trust that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection are what makes us right with God. Uh, to, to illustrate it, we may say that we believe it just as much as I believe that the chair I'm sitting in right now is, is going to hold me up. Army example, uh, why do we go into the house of tears? Why do we go into this room full of CS gas? We go into the house of tears so that we can learn to trust and believe in our gas masks. After having passed through the house of tears, I believe that I want a gas mask in my life. So repent, change of mind, followed by a change of direction. Believe, trusting that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is what makes us right. With God. Once we, rep once we repent and believe, we are free to recover and pursue God's original design again. We get a do-over, and hallelujah, amen, we all need a do-over, and God gives unlimited do-overs. This is the process called sanctification. Now, even after we believed in God and we've been made right in God's eyes again, we will still mess up. Living proof, we'll still mess up. Repenting and believing doesn't fix everything, but repenting and believing does 
forgive everything. So do you see how it's come full circle? God's original design from sin into brokenness. From brokenness, we can recover and pursue thanks to the gospel. And from the gospel, having believed in the gospel, we are then free to recover and pursue God's original design again. And after we recovered and pursued God's original design again, thanks to the gospel, we now have Jesus walking with us, helping us. He changes our hearts, he motivates us to recover and pursue God's original design again. The Bible says that anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed away, literally died. The old has died, behold, the new has come. So I may ask you at this point to just think about where do you see yourself in that narrative? From God's original design, we have all sinned and experienced brokenness. Maybe you're in brokenness right now and you want to repent and believe. Find the gospel so that you can recover and pursue God's original design again. If you find yourself identifying, identifying with the brokenness piece of this description, then I would have to ask you, is there anything that would prevent you from repenting and believing in the gospel today? Is there anything that would prevent you from repenting and believing in the gospel right now? I wanna ask you five questions. I just want you to think and answer them to yourselves. If you're still listening at this point in the video, the next one minute is definitely gonna be worth your while. First question is, are you a sinner? Do you want forgiveness for your sins? Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again? Here's a big one. Are you willing to surrender your life to Christ? And then finally, are you ready to invite Jesus into your heart and into your life? Biblically, are you ready to repent and believe in Jesus Christ? If your answer to any of to those questions is all yes, in particular the last question, are you ready to repent and believe and invite Jesus into your life? Then I would ask you to call me. Uh, every email I've ever sent has my personal cell phone number at the bottom of it, and you absolutely positively know that you are free to reach out to me uh, at any time. You always have been. My door is always open, and you always will be. My number's not changing anytime soon. So you have received this via email. You know my email. Because you've received this via email, you have my email signature with my personal cell phone number in it. And... Um, you know, it's been at least a year with most of you. Longer than that for some of you who've been in the program since the beginning. And I'm, I'm coming up on three years. So I've spent between one and three years uh, with all of you. And I hope that in that amount of time, we have, a, we, we have an earned relationship between each other. This is not um, street, street evangelism. This is not a mission trip where we're passing out popsicles and I'm uh, handing out religious tracts. I uh, don't like that word one bit, religious. This is a relationship between you and me that we've earned through time in the classroom, time in the field, time through shared adversity. And I'm talking about a relationship that has changed my life, and that's a relationship with the creator of the universe. So if you are needing to reach out to me because you answered, you're ready to uh, repent and believe and invite Jesus into your life, uh, I hope you'll do that. If you have that burning in your heart, that's the Holy Spirit talking to you, I hope you will reach out to me and I will answer post haste. So with that, uh, Sooners, I love you very much. I love each and every one of you very much. And I want to wish you well. And I hope that you'll do good. That's not a grammatical. In, in, that's not incorrect grammar. I want to wish you well. And I hope that you will do good. Sooner strong. I love you. And I'll see you on the high side.